All right, in this lesson, once again, we are going to focus on our little coin object here down in the bottom left of my screen. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to keep track of the number of coins that the player has collected in the game level using what is called a singleton. Sometimes in Godot, this is called an auto load or an auto loaded code file or a global code file. And of course, the purpose of keeping track of the number of coins the game player has collected is to win the game. If the user has collected a certain number of coins, well, the user will switch to a different screen. In this case, we're simply going to reload the game level at this state in our game project. But let's go ahead and jump in. But of course, before we can do any of that, we have to add multiple coins into our game level to collect. So let's go ahead up to our game level root node. And with it selected, I'm going to add a new folder into my project tree, just like we've added all of our blocks into a blocks folder. We're going to add one of these node 3Ds to act like a folder for all of our coins. So with the root node of our scene selected, I will press plus and I'm going to add another node 3 3D into my scene. So I'll select node 3D and press create. I'm going to name that node coins with a capital C, I think. And I'm going to drag that first coin that we have in our game level, which is right here. I'm going to drag that coin into my coins folder like that. And now I can go ahead and select that coin and right click on it and say duplicate. When I do that, it should create another identical coin in the exact same spot. And because my first coin was named coin one, it'll auto name the second one coin two. So now I can place this duplicate coin anywhere in my game level. But what I might want to do is turn on snapping. In Godot, up in the top toolbar, there is this little magnet with dots button. This is snapping. If I go ahead and click on that button to turn snapping on, now when I move around the coin object, you can see that it's snapping to an increment, which is handy. What I'm going to do right now is take just a few moments and speed this part of the video up, but I'm going to take my coins and make a nice little row of coins right along here. But to save time, I'll speed this part of the video up. Okay, so I have my row of six coins. Of course, you'll want to spend more time than me to place coins around your game level. Of course, the goal of my game, the way that you win this game, is to collect all the coins throughout the game level. Of course, when you're testing your game, you'll want to start off small. So you'll want to see if you can collect three or five coins to win the game before you actually turn that value up so that your threshold for winning is actually the final number. But in this case, I'll just have six and test with a total of six coins to win the game as well. The next step is to create a global code file known as a singleton. A singleton is essentially a code file that there is only ever one of. Essentially, this is a global code file that isn't going to be attached to any object in our game. Instead, we're going to go down to our file system dock and I'm going to right click where there's no other file here. So I'll right click right down here and I'm going to simply say new script. We're going to make a new GD script file and I'm going to name this file uh, after res colon slash slash. I'm going to name it global dot GD, just like me, all lowercase. Probably that's a good name. I'm going to go ahead and press create. When I make a new code file that's not attached to any code file in my game, I have to actually load it manually by going down to the file system dock and double clicking on it right there to open it up. This code file has more than what I need in it to start. So I'm going to go ahead and delete everything except that top line of code, which should say extends node. I'm going to leave that, but I'll delete everything else. In this code file, I'm simply going to have one variable. I'm going to make a variable here called called var coins, and I'm going to make it equal to zero. Now, because this variable coins is an integer variable, and because it's always going to be an integer variable, I'm going to put a colon right before the equal sign. And essentially what this does is it makes sure that this coins variable is always going to be an integer. In other words, it makes coins a statically typed variable because it's taking this type of data. Zero is an integer with no decimal point, and it's making coins a static type of variable by getting the type of variable that it is implied from its first initialized value. Okay, so this variable will always be an integer 
and this is optimized because of that extra colon in there. Okay. The next thing I have to do is actually make this global.gd code file load when I run my project. When Godot loads a project, if I go ahead and press Control S to save, when I have level one active and I press play scene, Godot will only load things that are necessary for your game. In this case, global.gd will not be loaded because it's not used in my game at all. What I have to do here is go up to my project and project settings and tell my project to auto load this code file. So in project settings, I'm going to go to the auto load tab where I can choose a code file and I can give it a name, which I can use in any of my code files in my entire project to access this global code file. So what I'm going to do here is next to path, I'm going to press this little folder icon. I'm going to choose that code file from my project folder, which is res. So I'm going to select global.gd and press open. When I do that, it's going to suggest a name for this code file, which I can refer to in code later on. It's always going to suggest the name of your code file, but with a capital letter. So global.gd becomes global with a capital G, which I like. So I'm going to press add. When I press add, that file gets listed in this main part of this window next to the name global, which is good. So it's done. Let's go ahead and press close. Next, I have to go to just one of my coins. So I'm going to go back to my scene doc here and select any one of my coins and go to its code file. I'll go ahead and close this doc at the bottom. It's in this code file where you can see the code that I have written to detect a collision between the coin and the player. This function here on body entered is the coin detecting if a player has touched it. What I'm going to do here is add one more line of code into this function, which will add one to that global coins variable that we just made. To do that, I'm going to click right here and press enter. To access that global code file, I simply need to type that keyword that we assigned to that code file, which was global with a capital G. So I'll type global with a capital G. And then to access anything in that code file, I simply put a dot and now I can type coins, which is the name of that variable that I added to that code file just a moment ago. To add one to that variable, I'm simply going to use an increment operator, which in this case is going to be plus equals, and then I'll simply put one. When you use this operator plus equals, it takes the value that you have on the right of that operator and it adds that value into the variable that you have on the left of that operator. It works exactly as we want. So every time this line of code runs, it takes that global.coins variable and it adds one to it. Great. However, we can't see the value of global.coins to see if this is actually working. So I'm simply going to put a print method call down here and I'm going to print out to that output doc at the bottom when we run our game global.coins. So every time we collect a coin, it will add one to the global coins variable and then we'll print out global.coins uh, capitalized correctly like that. I'll press control S to save, and we'll see if that works by running our game. I'll go ahead and collect a coin. And as you can see in my output doc, there is a one. I'll go ahead and collect two and three and four and five and six. And that seems to work. How do we actually win the game when we collect all six? Again, I would recommend that you do your testing for this next bit of code with a low number. If you put 50 coins throughout your whole game level, don't make yourself test with all 50 coins every time you want to see if it actually works properly. Start with a lower number like two or three or five or six. Okay. In this same function on body entered, we are adding one to coins. We are printing out the number of coins. I'm going to put an if statement. I'm going to say if global.coins is greater than or equal to six, I will put a colon at the end of that line and press enter. The next line should be one extra tab indented. What I want to have happen if this condition is true? Well, I want to switch to a different scene in my game to the you win screen or something like that. In this case, I'm going to simply reload my game level. So I'm going to call that get underscore tree method from a previous lesson. And I'm going to say get tree dot 
change scene to file, which is prompted in the autocomplete little pop-up right there. I'll simply press enter and I want to change back to my level one, which will reload level one just like that. Okay, I'll go ahead and control S to save. With my level one scene active, I'll press play scene. And now if I collect all my coins, ha, huh, the game level restarts, I've won my game. One thing you might wanna do here is instead of having this number six hard coded here on line 18 in my code, I'm gonna make a variable up at the top of my program. In fact, it's gonna be a constant. I'm gonna make a constant called num coins to win. And I'm gonna make that equal to six. That way I can change that number up here at the top of this code file, instead of having to rifle through my code file, find that number, which is now on line 20 and change it here in the middle of my code. In fact, what I might wanna do instead of putting it here at the top of my coin code file is I'm actually gonna cut this line. I'll press control X with it selected. I actually have that sidebar in my script editor hidden. So I'll press this little arrow here. In my global code file, I'll paste that line here instead. And that way I can simply go to my global code file to change the number of coins to win the game. Now that I have this here, I'm gonna press control S and then go back to my coin file where I'm going to say, instead of if global.coins is greater than or equal to six, I'm gonna say global dot and then num coins to win and it'll prompt me with the correct uh, variable name or constant name there, and that should do it. So now if I press control S on my keyboard to save and I run level one, I should be able to collect all six coins and win the game. So to finish off this lesson, here is the code file on my coin. I've added a few lines into this code file here. I might wanna get rid of this print line. I won't need that moving forward in this project. Just a note that this global code file, this singleton can be used to keep track of values across different levels. Like in your game, you might keep track of the number of lives that your character has, but those lives should be kept track of across different game levels. So if you lose a life in one level and then you finish that level, you should start the next level with that same reduced number of lives. Hopefully you can see how a global code file would help you make that. However, there is one problem with our game as it stands. If I go ahead back to my 3D workspace and I run my game project and I collect a few coins and then I die. So I'm gonna jump off the edge and hit that fall zone. Well, as it stands, I collected a few coins and in doing so, I changed that global code file. And because I then died and restarted my game level, that global code file didn't change and reset that variable back to zero when I restarted my game level after I died. So right now, if I collect the very first coin, well, what is the value of global.coins? It's not one, even though I've just collected one coin because I already collected a few coins before I jumped off the side of my platform. So now if I collect two, three, and four, you can see I didn't have to collect all the coins in my game level. In fact, right now I can just collect one coin to win because global.coins is now above six. And because if I have coins above six and when I touch a coin, I win the game, there's a problem here. How do I fix this? Well, on the root node of my game level, on this level one node, I'm gonna add a script file. So with it selected, I'll press add script. I'm gonna make it called level1.gd, that's fine. I'll press create. In this code file, I'm simply gonna have the level when it's ready, reset that global coins variable back to zero every time the game level loads. I can do that, of course, right here in this ready function. The ready function will execute when this element that this code file is on every time it loads. So when we reload a scene using get tree dot change scene to file, it will load this scene again and run this ready function every time. So right here, I'm simply gonna say global.coins, I'm gonna reset it to equal zero. That should do it. I'll go ahead and press control S to save. 
And I'll go ahead and try this out. I'm going to press play scene. I'm going to collect, let's say, three or four coins and then jump off the edge. The game resets. And now if I collect one, two, three, four, five, I didn't win, which means it worked. If I collect six, I've won the game. It resets. I can now go back and collect a fresh six to win the game again. It works. Great. So I think that'll be it for this lesson. In this lesson, we touched upon a few different code files. Here is my level 1.gd code file that we just added to the root node of our game level. Here we have our global code file with a variable coins and a constant number of coins to win. And of course, we have our coin script. I'll go ahead and hide this bottom doc here where we added just a few lines of code right here. That's it. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.